The balloon apocalypse is upon us, and we need to prepare our defenses. That begs the question, what balloons TD6 tower can we affordably use to defend ourselves from the swarm of balloons that are approaching? That is why I'm on a journey to find the most cost-effective tower for popping balloons in real life. This is the part 2 to our previous balloons video where we calculated the cost of the primary monkeys. You should totally go watch that one after this video. You don't have to watch them in order. So now that we've finished with calculating the cost of the primary monkeys, we can move on to the largest class in the game, the military monkeys. I'm going to tell you the cost of each military monkey in its base form and its three tier 5 forms. The first monkey that we're going to look at is the sniper monkey. To create a sniper monkey, we'll first need a sniper rifle. A good option would be to buy the $750 Remington Model 700 Bolt Action Rifle. And because this gun doesn't come with its own scope, we will need to buy one. And going along with the balloons theme, we're purchasing the $349 Vortex Diamondback Rifle Scope. Lastly, we'll be giving our sniper monkey a stylish $20 green beret hat. If we total the cost of these items, we'll end up with a base cost of $1,120, far exceeding the in-game base cost of just 350 cash. However, unlike the monkeys in the game, we'll actually need to pay for the ammo we use. With a fire rate of once per 0.63 seconds, it would cost 37 cents per second for the rifle ammunition. Now for a slightly more interesting tower, we have the Cripple Moab. This tower is actually a fairly good deal. The sniper will be a slightly higher quality gun, coming with a price tag of around $2,000. The laser scope that it'll be using will actually cost us more than the gun itself at $2,869. Adding on the green ghillie suit, we get a base cost of $4,960.39 with a slightly more expensive ammo costing us $3.15 per second. The next monkey is the most expensive so far, but not for the reason you might think. The Elite Sniper comes with a base cost of $13,000 in game, but in real life it would actually be cheaper coming in at only $6,488 for the base cost. That would be $2,500 for the gun and the scope, $200 for the cool gray ammo, and $2,700 for the night vision goggle lenses. Since it's using the same ammo and has the same fire rate as the previous sniper monkey, it'll still cost us just $3.15 per second. The part where it becomes expensive, though, is when we take into consideration the ability that the monkey has. The purpose of this ability is to airdrop a crate full of 3,000 cash from a plane every time the ability is used. However, if we were to consider the costs going into using this ability, they far outweigh the money gained. Every ability we see the sniper monkey fire a flare gun into the air, followed by a stealth bomber dropping a crate over the monkey. Since the, all these items are reusable, we would only need to do a one-time purchase of a $72.90 flare gun, a $198 crate, and a $737 million stealth bomber. Now we would be losing a lot of money in the short term just to use this ability once, but it would only take us 244,000 ability uses to pay off this debt. That's over 254 days of constant usage. For the last of the Sniper Monkey Tier 5 upgrades, we have the Elite Defender. His base in-game cost is 14,000 cash. This one might be a bit of a doozy, since at his maximum rate, he can fire 123 times per second. Since there are no sniper rifles that can shoot at a rate of 123 rounds per second, it's implied that the Elite Defender is an incredibly well-trained monkey that can reload his gun in milliseconds. Therefore, this feat would be hypothetically possible with the same Remington Model 700 that the base monkey uses, costing us $750. The monkey is also equipped with ski goggles, which cost us $24, and riot gear, which costs $680. The initial cost for the Elite Defender would then be $1,454, but that's not where it ends. The bullets for this gun cost $3 each. Multiplying that by its insane 123 per second attack rate, you get $369 per second just to keep this monkey shooting balloons. Next up, we have quite the interesting tower. The base monkey submarine would be this $360,000 yellow submarine, which you would obviously paint gray to be less visible in battle, as well as a cool $11 captain's hat. Since the monkey sub fires only darts, we only have a cost per second of $1.15. Even with the relatively cheap cost per second, I still don't think that spending $360,000 on a tower that only costs 325 cash in game is a good idea. Now it's time to get nuclear, because we need to find the cost of the Energizer Tier 5 submarine upgrade. The US Virginia class nuclear submarine looks like an adequate vessel to use. Unfortunately, this specific nuclear submarine comes in at the hefty cost of $3.45 billion. But don't worry, because we are in luck. Because the method of balloon popping is by the radiation of the sub itself, we don't actually have any cost per second. But let's just hope that our monkeys inside and around the sub are able to survive the massive amounts of radiation pouring off of it. The preemptive strike is up next. 
This time we need to use the $450 million Scorpion class submarine, capable of launching the Exocet missiles that we will be firing. The missiles bring up the cost per second to $400,000, with an additional missile being fired every time a Moab appears, costing $200,000 more. The missile used in the ability would be much more powerful, $50 million Sheffield missile. For the final submarine upgrade, we have the Sub Commander. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because it's not as interesting, but it's $1 million base cost for the submarine along with $3,862 per second for the high quality darts. For our next tower, we have the Monkey Buccaneer. While in-game it only costs 500 cash, the cost of the Robo and the two cannons will drive up the real life cost to $5,033 with $1.72 per second in darts. The carrier flagship is the first tier 5 for the Monkey Buccaneer, and boy is it expensive. As the name implies, we will need to purchase a carrier flagship, and what better aircraft carrier than to purchase than the Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier? Unfortunately for us, the aircraft carrier will cost us $13.3 billion. But not to worry, as we will be able to afford this carrier after only 168,696 years of non-stop working at McDonald's. On top of that, the base cost of the aircraft carrier, we will also need to spend $263.1 million for the three F-15 EX fighter jets. And if that insane base cost wasn't enough, we need an extra $83,375 every second for the darts and the missiles. Next up is a bit of a goofy tower. For the Pirate Lord, we're going to need to find a real-life pirate ship that we can buy. Luckily for us, this 1953 Galleon pirate ship is available for the low, low price of $346,405. And just to speed through the rest of the base cost, we have $3,834 for 6 cannons, $720 for the harpoon guns, and $20 bucks for the stylish pirate outfit. For the cost per second, we have some relatively cheap dumb bombs, some darts, and a volley of red flame seedless grapes. The final boat tier 5 is the Trade Empire, a boat that is, ostensibly, supposed to gain you money, but doesn't quite work that way in real life. The container ship itself would cost $10 million, far more than the 23000 cash in the game. Every real life round, whatever that would be, generates us $800. This means that we will have to have our Trade Empire fully paid off by around 12500 Except, of course, the $1.5 cost per second for firing it. Next up on the list is the Monkey Ace. I actually found a near identical match to the in-game Monkey Ace, costing just under $100,000. Now this already is a ton for what is basically 8 dart monkeys that can't aim, but it gets so much worse. If we wanted to create this tower in real life, not only would we need to purchase an expensive plane, but we would also need to purchase an entire concrete runway to launch the plane from. This runway would be insanely expensive, costing us around $2.5 million, but hey, at least it's only $4.11 per second to fire. I'm going to get this out of the way before getting into the tier 5s. Since all the tier 5 aces require a runway, the cost of it is already going to be factored in. Now we can move on to the Sky Shredder. So remember that Stealth Bomber that I mentioned earlier for the Cash Shop ability? Well, we have another Stealth Bomber to purchase, with this time it being the much cheaper $120 million J-20 fighter jet. Now, I know some people may say that we can just reuse the plane from the Sky Shredder for the Cash Shop, but we can clearly see that these two jets are in different shapes, therefore making it an impossible substitution. For the firing, the darts won't actually be much of a concern, costing us only $88 a second, but the real issue is the $1,090,000 AIM-120 laser guided missile that the Sky Shredder fires once every second. The next tier 5 we have is the Sar Bomba, and if you know anything about nuclear weapons, you know that this is not going to be cheap. For the plane, we'll be using the $30 million B-52 Stratofortress, which is capable of dropping our nuclear bomb. We, of course, can't neglect to mention the $4,900 cost per second of the bombs and darts, but that's not the interesting part. This monkey has the ability to drop the Tsar Bomba, which is the largest nuclear bomb ever detonated. Unfortunately, there is no recorded cost for how much the Tsar Bomba costs to create. So, that is why, to recreate the blast of the Tsar Bomba, we will be using four of the slightly smaller Castle Bravo bombs to equal the blast of the Tsar Bomba. Each nuke would cost $30 million, adjusted for inflation, meaning that we would be spending $120 million every time we use this ability. The final monkey is tier 5 is the Flying Fortress. This thing is going to cost us. The plane we'll be using is the $75.5 million beast named the Lockheed Martin C-130J Super Hercules. The most expensive part of this tower will be the $55,600 bombs that this plane recklessly chucks at balloons at a speed of 3 bombs every 0.04 seconds. This means that we'll be spending $4,170,000 per second just to keep this tower running in the air. Once again our monkeys take to the skies with the helicopter pilot monkey. The helicopter allows the monkey army to position this tower wherever you want to shoot down the balloons from above. The tier 0 heli pilot monkey is a simple monkey in a helicopter that shoots 2 dark volleys twice a second. 
Its base cost is 1,600 cash. For our purposes, the helicopter is a 2001 Airbus Eurocopter E120B, which you can buy from Switzerland for $760,000. The monkey's leather aviator helmet can be bought for $47.95 online. Of course, we're not done yet. The helicopter is useless without a helipad. We opted in for only the highest quality aluminum rooftop pads, equipped with features such as a snow melting equipment and a fire suppression capability, which would cost us about $500,000. It's a little steep, yes, but the amazing monkey pilots deserve only the best. Total price of the base heli pilot is $1,260,047.95 plus the additional $345 each second. The first tier 5 helicopter is the Apache Prime upgrade. This bad boy costs 45,000 cash to upgrade to, and is modeled after the classic Apache attack helicopter. In 2017, the US Army and Boeing signed a contract to buy AH-64E Apache attack helicopters for about $13 million each. Going off of this cost, we also need missiles and a plasma cannon to actually battle the balloons. The real life equivalent to the missiles is the Guided Bomb Unit 24 Low Level Laser Guided Bomb. This bomb costs $55,600 to make. The chopper shoots four of these missiles each second, thus totaling a cost of $222,400 every second that it shoots these. However, the Apache Prime has a plasma machine gun that fires off a plasma vault every 0.05 seconds. That's to say it shoots 20 plasma balls each second. Now, you may be asking, okay, how on earth are you going to get a plasma ball? Well, let's make it simple. By putting two grapes next to one another inside a microwave oven, the trapped microwaves can hop between the grapes, generating strong electromagnetic field, which provides the energy for the electrons and ions to escape from the molecules inside the grapes in the air, which produces plasma. Do you see where I'm going with this? A KitchenAid 22 inch wide 1000 watt microwave oven costs $678. Assuming they have this onboard microwave running full of grapes constantly, we just need to calculate the cost of grapes per second. Running with the 2021 average cost per pound of grapes, we get a figure of $2.24. This means that each grape costs three cents. Since it shoots 20 plasma grapes per second, we would need to pay 60 cents each second for the plasma cannon to run. Adding all this up and carrying over the price of the helipad, the Apache Prime costs a total of $13,500,678, plus an additional cost of $222,400.60. The second helicopter tier 5 upgrade is the Special Operations, which has an in-game cost of 30,000 cash. The Chinook has three abilities. Marine, which allows it to deploy a machine gun wielding marine monkey. Supply Crate, which drops two crates full of cash and lives on the ground and Pickup Tower, which repositions one tower to another location on the screen. The first price we need to determine is the chopper itself. The Boeing CH-47F Chinook helicopter is perfect for this job, and it costs $32 million. The Marine ability will cost $2,400, plus an additional $17.2 per second for the bullets. The 36 by 36 by 36 plywood crate for the crate drop ability costs $456 per use, but it gives $4,500 cash in return. Of course, we carry over the cost of the $500,000 helipad. To conclude the helicopter section, the Comanche Commander is up next. Its base in-game cost is $35,000 cash. The Boeing RAH-66 Comanche helicopter costs $70 million to add to our army. However, that's not all. The Comanche Commander's main selling point is its ability to summon in three smaller helicopters to help it pop balloons. The smaller Eurocopter Tiger helicopter costs $46 million to buy, and since the Comanche Commander summons three, we have to add $138 million to our total. Add up the cost of the helipad, and we get a base cost of $208.5 million. Additionally, the Comanche Commander fires off two darts per second. The three mini Comanches each fire off a volley of three darts three times a second. As for the rockets, the Commander and mini Comanches fire an average of two AIM-9 Sidewinder rockets each second for a cost of $381,069 each. This means that the complete average cost per second of the Comanche Commander Tower is $762,139. Alright, Mortar Monkey now. The base in game cost is $750 cash. It's based off the US World War II 81mm mortar, which costs $3,995. The helmet is $100 as well. It fires a $2,000 mortar shell every 2 seconds, therefore, its cost per second is $1,000. That's expensive, yes, but nowhere near the cost of the biggest one tier 5 upgrade. Its base in-game cost is 28,000 cash. Its cost in real life comes from the $3.738 million M777 howitzer artillery, which is capable of launching a nuclear W48 implosion plutonium fission weapon that costs $1.25 million. It shoots this shell every 2.2 seconds. This gives it a cost per second of $568,000. The Papanaw monkey costs 30,000 cash in-game. 
in real life, we can assume it is a set of three M252 81mm medium mortars, each costing $24,717. The hat cost $65.66 on Etsy. The total base cost of the real life Papanaw mortar monkey is $74,216.66. It fires off a deadly M982 Excalibur rocket, which costs 68,000 bucks once every 0.269 seconds, giving it a cost per second of $252,788. Finally, the Bloon Cinerator. It has an in-game cost of 40,000 cash. The artillery gun we use is the M107-175mm self-propelled gun. The unit cost of the M107 is approximately $159,000. However, large rocket launching mortars generally make some noise, so, it makes sense why the Monkey Army would equip its soldier with ear protection, which costs $1,025. Personally, I wouldn't pay that much for a gaming headset, but these guys were serious. The helmet costs $100, and the goggles cost $125. The total base real life cost is $160,250. Its cost per second is $375, which comes from the incendiary howitzer rounds that it fires twice every second. The final military monkey in Balloons TD6 is the Dartling Gunner. It has an in-game cost of $850 and a minigun that shoots 5 bullets per second. The gun costs $180,000, which is probably a scam because last time I checked, it wasn't legal to have a mounted M134 minigun inside your house. But what are the feds going to do, take it from you? You have a minigun. Anyway, the helmet is on a limited time sale for $100, so if you're on a low budget, then now's the best time to buy. The first tier 5 upgrade path for the Dartling Gunner is the Ray of Doom. This is surprisingly cheap, because a Galactic Space Infinity Blaster pistol gun with flashing lights and blasting sound effects costs $12.57. If you want something with a little more power, then I would recommend a weapons-grade solid-state laser cannon, which costs $40 million. Its cost per second is zero, because you're basically shooting light. The Moab Assured Destroyer, or MAD for short, is a giant mech suit that shoots one rocket every 0.4 seconds. You can buy a mega mech suit off Amazon for $35. The Tomahawk missiles it shoots cost two million each, so five million dollars per second. And the final tower we have to go over today is the Balloon Exclusion Zone. To calculate its cost, we found the real life equivalent, which would be the $7 Despicable Me 2 McDonald's Happy Meal Toy Minion No. 8 Stewart Blaster Fart Gun 2013. Well, that just about wraps up the military towers. Comment down below what you think the best tower for fighting the real-life balloon apocalypse is. Sub to the channel to support the quality of our content, and thanks for watching!